In this video, we are going to explore some of the problems created by our overwhelming use of plastics. We will discuss the actions that you can take right now to make this world a better place, as well as focus on some steps that can be taken by organizations and governments. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering and technology for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe today to get the notification of our latest videos. In late 2017, the BBC documentary Blue Planet 2 made a huge impact around the world. Since its telecast, great measures have been taken by many countries for curbing plastic waste, particularly one that is slipping into our oceans. One alarming fact is that if we keep on polluting at the existing levels, then by the year 2050 we will have more plastic than fish in our oceans. Despite the seemingly mountainous challenge at hand, we as individuals can also make huge inroads in tackling this issue. This problem is as yet not too big to solve. We must understand the nature of the problem and realize that putting a blanket ban on plastics is close to impossible given that our lives and economies have become so much dependent upon them. Therefore, clever steps have to be taken to solve the issue strategically. There are many kinds of plastics. Some of them are more recyclable while others are not. If you look at any plastic product, it would have a label embossed on it. This label contains a number surrounded with a recycling symbol. Number one on the label indicates PET or polyethylene terephthalate. Number two indicates HDPE or high density polyethylene. Number three is PVC or polyvinyl chloride. Number four is LDPE or low density polyethylene. Number 5 is polypropylene, number 6 is polystyrene, and number 7 is any other plastic including polycarbonate and ABS, or it may be a combination of plastics 1 to 6. The higher the number on the label, the harder the plastic is to recycle. Therefore, first and foremost, we should target the higher number plastic products and limit their use as most recycling centers would not accept them. We should particularly disregard them if they are for single use. Example is food packaging plastic. Products made out of number 6 are considered to be human carcinogenic while number 7 category plastic has also been related to health problems. It should be noted that plastic shopping bags fall under the number 4 category meaning they are hard to recycle and people do use them a lot. In the UK, their use was reduced by over 90% in just a year by introducing a 5 pence tax per bag. So just a simple step of using a tote bag or a reusable plastic bag can immensely help in bringing down the number of shopping bags used today. Recently, some recycling centers have found a way to recycle the number 5 in the list, polypropylene plastic. Most plastic dishes and cutlery fall in this category, including baby bottles, ketchup bottles, and yogurt tubs. Nonetheless, it should be avoided when it can. So the strategy at the individual level is to follow the mantra, reduce, reuse, and recycle, and in that particular order. But what are the solutions at a larger scale? Thankfully, scientists are looking into the reuse of hard to recycle plastics in a variety of ways. There are some great ideas already in place for capturing them. Once they are captured, the next part is what to do with them. One promising solution is to use them in concrete structures. So plastics will become part of the buildings, roads, pavements, and bridges of the future. Scientists at the MIT have devised a method not only to incorporate plastics in the structures, but also fortify it while doing so. By adding plastics to concrete, scientists have been able to strengthen it by 15%. It's interesting to note that manufacturing of concrete itself generates about 4.5% of the world's human-induced carbon dioxide emissions. Replacing even a small portion of concrete with irradiated plastic could thus help in reducing the cement industry's global carbon footprint and at the same time take care of plastic waste. There's also an international consortium working on an engineered enzyme that can degrade plastics. The finding was serendipitous. Scientists were trying to find out the structure of a natural enzyme which is thought to have evolved in a recycling center in Japan and in doing so they found a bacterium that can digest plastic. However, it is only the PET or type 1 of plastic that it can digest. It may be possible 
to genetically modify the structure of the enzyme to allow it to consume other harder types of plastics, but it is some years away. And then there is pyrolysis of plastics. It is a process that can convert most plastics into crude oil. This process has both its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that it can take care of tons of plastic that is already in or will go to end up in the landfills. The disadvantage is that of the dangerous fume emissions for which there is little control. Furthermore, this process disincentivizes the reduction in plastic use. The final product by pyrolysis, that is crude oil, can go to generate plastic again. The plastic to fuel pyrolysis industry would depend upon the waste plastic as raw material, so it is a double-edged sword and its benefit is dependent upon how it is managed. It is the manner in which the government incentivizes the reduction in plastic that ultimately goes a long way in scaling down our use. Taxes should be put where plastics are being used redundantly. In Indonesia, citizens have been encouraged to recycle plastic for which they are rewarded with bus tickets. Such schemes can raise our consciousness towards our debt to the environment. In countries that are environmentally conscious, plastic recycling rates are extremely high. For example, in Germany, 65% of plastic is recycled. A huge portion of this was achieved by modifying German packaging laws. We have unconsciously walked ourselves into a problem. So we must behave collectively and purposefully not just to get ourselves out of this mess, but to end the mess altogether. And with this, the video is concluded. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you learned something from it. Share it with children and schools to create awareness. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for your attention.